26 to 29. The mystery revealed. Colossians 1, 26 to 29. The word of God reads, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. God has got some extra special blessings for each one of us. Speaking and receiving. How you doing? Speaking and receiving. What you speak, believe. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is coming back soon? Amen. This morning as I was drinking my coffee and reading the word early this morning, and the Lord gave me a word, and the word was this, is it time to cross over? Is it time to cross over the Jordan? Is it time to cross over into eternity? And I was thinking about that. Brother Skeeter, Brother Rex, reaffirm whether or not the Lord returns tomorrow or the next day. If not, we, we take our last breath today or tomorrow. For us, eternity has came, has come. And I believe this. I believe God is speaking to us as a church and as individuals. A church is made up of believers. Christ Jesus is the head, as we'll see later, of the body of believers. And Christ is speaking to us. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. If you have unforgiveness, get it straight down. You might be being blessed, but if you've got unforgiveness, you're hindering all of the blessings that God has for you. Amen. Let me give you an illustration. While the men was working in the yard, ever how long ago it was, this is a pretty big yard too, and the woods behind them belong to the church as well. I don't fool with that, I leave the squirrels and the rabbits to take care of that. And I think we got a skunk too. <laughs> how do you know, brother? Because well, it's about without a skunk. Praise the Lord. But anyway, God is moving, and God wants to touch you. Let's go on. The mystery that has been hidden from ages and generations has now been revealed. Revealed is done uncover. A mystery is something that we don't understand, or something that is puzzling. God now reveals the mystery of His saints, which born again believers. God now would make known to us through the indwelling Christ. When you're saved, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you receive the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament didn't. They long for what we have. They long for what we have. But they had faith. Abraham had faith that if he would have killed his son, Isaac, that God would raise him. But the difference is the faith then and the faith today. When we accept Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Ghost in us. We have the Holy Spirit in us. And that's a mystery that's revealed. But we need to go further. 
This mystery is revealed in order for each one of us to know who we are in God. You are important. You're not part of a religion. You're not part of a denomination. You're not part of a church. You are part of the family of God. Amen. And that's very important today. We see bigger churches springing up. It's almost like Walmart when they go into a community. Walmart eats up the mom and pop stores. Well, I got news for them. I go to mom and pop stores the best that I can. Very seldom, and I'm not telling nobody to do anything, very seldom I go to Walmart. But we got larger churches today that's eating up the smaller churches. And that's just the way it is. But I believe this. God has got a reason and a purpose for each and every church that puts Jesus first. So I pray for the Lord's churches. I pray for their pastors and their wives and their families. And I pray that they pray for the small churches as well because I don't think we're small. After worship service this morning, I don't think we're small. I'll tell you what is a powerful worship service. But I do know this. When you have a powerful worship service, and people come in and they come under conviction they're going to run. They're either going to run to the altar or they're going to run somewhere else. Amen. The mystery to know and come to an understanding of all that God has for us in order for us to be all that we can be for God. God didn't create you and breathe life into you. And His Holy Spirit Kind and dwell in us for us to be like a fish that's out of the water on the bank flapping around. If you ever fish like I did when I was a kid in the country, you'd catch a fish and you just put it down and it flat, it just flat. All it do is get dusty. Putting up a lot of effort but it's not doing anything. It's got to be in the environment that God created it to be to be able to swim. God created us and put us in an environment where we don't have to be defeated. We don't have to be abused because God breathed life into us. You, hey, come on now, y'all ready for this? You have victory. Now don't tell me you have victory. Show me you got victory. You got victory over sin. You got victory over demons. You got victory over sickness. You got victory. Don't tell me about the victory. Live the victory. Show me the victory. Don't tell me how. Don't tell me how religious you are. Show me how much you love God by loving His creation. Amen. And I got. Oh man, I can do this for 14 days and three nights, but I just got something tonight, and I got to get on the. <laughs> we got to get on the ground. It's impossible for us to be all that we can be for God on our own. God knows that. And God goes about revealing His inner self to us as believers. The mystery has been revealed. And also the mystery is this. In the New Testament, Gentiles are saved just like Hebrew children. We're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we have the Holy Ghost living in us just like the Hebrews, the chosen people of our Lord. That's another mystery that's been revealed and I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. God wants us to know. God wants to make known the riches of His glory. The riches of His glory. These riches have been hidden from generation to generation till now. Y'all know what the Jubilee is? Help me out on my mind going numb now. Whatever 50 years, whatever the Hebrew children was given by God, after 50 years, it was given back to them. It was given back to them. People, what has been taken from us, God wants to give back to us. If your finances have been stolen, God wants to return it. Whatever, God wants to return it, and I believe it. <clears throat> It's not how high we jump or how loud we sing. It's how much we believe by faith that Jesus is going to do what He says He's going to do. He says you have riches that you don't even know about. 
We have the riches of His glory. Praise the Lord. One mystery is this, to present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Verse 28 says, <coughs> let me find it here. It says, whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. We can't do it on our own. We have to have Jesus Christ. Amen. We have to have His blood for forgiveness. You can't work it. You can't work it. You can't work for it. It's got to come because it's a free gift. Free gift. When Christ said it was finished on the cross of Calvary, it was finished. When He said it was finished, it was finished. I want to enter into the presence of the Holy of Holies. And God says I can. Jesus says I can. But God has so much for us. A lot of times they go right over our head. A lot of times we don't take time for the little things. We think we need the big things. Oh, if I just get this, oh, if I just get that. I tell you what, I'm thankful that God chose me many years ago to be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if he, He's chosen everyone here. He's chosen everyone here. Each one of us can be a mouthpiece for Jesus. And I'll say amen. One thing that I love, and maybe y'all recognize it, I don't know, but I love this more than anything else, is being able to say hello to each one of you as you come in. I love the eye-to-eye -eye contact with people. I love it more than anything else. Amen. Outside of my salvation, the love of my family, I love them too. But I like that one-on-one -on -one contact. I love it very much. In fact, to be honest with you, I live for that. I live for that moment to where I can say hello and see you. Wherever I go, I look for that moment. Where I can say, how you're doing? I love it. I love it. Don't you believe Jesus did it when He walked on the face of this earth? Amen. Amen. I think He did. Because y'all are shadow of that. But I love y'all. Y'all are very important to me. And I want to see you blessed. But I know this. You cannot be blessed totally and completely if you have unforgiveness, resentment, grudges against someone. Amen. Oh, you can have blessings. But I'm talking about the total riches that God wants to open up the windows of heaven and just pour out on you. I believe that. I believe it beyond a shadow of a doubt. You're saved. You're working in spiritual gifts. That's a big amen. But if you have unforgiveness, resentful, grudges, if somebody did you something according to the Word of God, don't try to get even with them. Let Jesus do it. Because when you do that according to the Word of God, you heap and cold the flame of the fire upon their head. Amen. Amen. Amen? But it's time, and I believe it. Let's look at some facts about Christ for just a little bit. Christ is the head of the kingdom, and I want to read it from God's Word. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Isn't that great? Isn't that, nobody get off of that. You, you, you look at beer commercials or whiskey commercials or whatever. All they can offer you is a headache. Am I right? You go to the gambling boats, all they can offer you is taking your money. Yeah. They ain't taking my money. I ain't paying no full wood cigar for them, them owners to smoke. I ain't at all good. I'll take that money and give it to some poor person. Some poor young girl that's going through troubles. You say, preacher, you're coming down hard. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm just 
tell them the truth. That's all. That's all. Nothing more. Nothing more. How many here has young girls? That young daughters? Okay. How many here has got young daughters? Don't you want them to be blessed beyond measure? Don't you think they're watching you? You know what the world wants, huh? The world wants them to have a hold of them. I want the Holy Ghost to have a hold of them. And let them be all they can be. And y'all with me on that? Yeah. I'm sure. I love, I love y'all. I love your kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids. I want the best for them. Praise the Lord. Christ is a redeemer. If I'm coming hard, y'all, y'all just forgive me. Put a hundred dollar bill in the offering and we're going. Christ is a redeemer. Christ is the, in the image of the invisible God. Verse 15, I love this. Yeah. Who is the image? Christ, they don't. Who is the image of the invisible God? The first born of every creature. Christ is the image of the invisible God. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is the first born of every creature. Christ is the creator of all things. I like this. Verse 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. All things were created by him and for him. That's my Savior. That's my Jesus. I have something that many people want, but many people don't have because they won't receive Christ as their Savior. Christ is an eternal being. Christ is the upholder of all things. Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the fullness of God. Christ is the mediator between God and man. And I say amen. That I come to Jesus. There's nobody can forgive me. Oh, if I do my brother or sister something wrong, they can say they forgive me. More than likely they do. But Christ is the only one that can forgive us and remember it no more. How many here knows we have a memory? We can say we forgive, and more than likely we do. Amen. But what about our memory? Christ, when He forgives us, He no longer remembers it anymore. Praise God. As far as the east is from the west, and there's no, it just boom, and it keeps on going. That's the Jesus we serve. That's the mystery that's been revealed. How many here want to see the windows of heaven just open up? And the rains just come. Amen. Amen. Lord, Amen. Turn it all over to Jesus. Amen. And you're going to see. How many miracles have this church seen over these last years? It's going on 19 years I'm in here. How many miracles have we seen? I never remembered something that I didn't remember, but I remember going in the hospital with both of your children. St. Francis, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. And the Lord. That was before that was before the, the, the Philip was born. How many here remembers that? Y'all were sitting right here, I believe. And and I never had a word. And it was for the, the Philip. How many miracles have we seen? God wants the blessings. I want to share that. This is it. I'm going to quote it right now. When you bless others, God is going to bless you. Amen. Amen. So Heavenly Father, we praise you this morning. I thank you for each one that's here. Bless them.
Lord, I'm going to pray a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit to be poured out on each one of you right now. In Jesus' name, I'm going to lift my brother up in the of the prison tonight. Lord, bless him beyond measure as he ministers to the men in the prison. And I want to pray for each and every one here now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We've got that on the ground. Faith does not make things easy, it makes them possible. Thank you. 